Well, hello, everyone. I'm really honored Lean Frontiers asked me to be a part of their Building Blocks webinar series. This series focuses on identifying the foundational skills necessary to create and sustain a culture of improvement. This is so important to me because I truly believe arming people with the necessary skills to create a culture of improvement crosses over to our personal lives. The foundational skills we'll discuss today are really life skills, and I love how the two aspects of our lives, work and personal, intersect in a positive way. My discussion with you is to define the foundational skills required to create a culture of improvement and how developing those skills will help you sustain that culture over time. To start with, though, we need a way to identify and frequently practice critical skills to enable us to create and sustain a culture of improvement inside our organizations. But what are foundational skills? American College Testing Organization defines foundational skills as fundamental, portable skills that are essential to conveying and receiving information that is critical to training and workplace success. These skills are fundamental in that they serve as the basis, the foundation, for supporting additional operations and tasks and learning. Think of these skills as building blocks to create the solid base you can always tap into and build from. Portable skills can be used in multiple situations. They travel with you as you move through the organization. They're skills you can utilize whether you're in a manufacturing environment, administration, finance, customer service, or even engineering. Finally, essential skills are ones that are used to convey and receive crucial information. We're communicating in a way where the information is passed along concisely, accurately, and streamlined so that information can be heard and acted on. I researched several business articles and university studies, and they all repeatedly identified the following foundational skills necessary for personal success. Communication, team player, research and analysis, tech savvy, and adaptability. These are really life skills in today's world. We have to be able to effectively communicate, work with others in a collaborative and supportive way, understand the need for doing good research and analysis, and know how to do it. Know how to operate within the various tech systems, or at the very least, know an 18-year-old who can teach us. And finally, we have to be flexible, responsive, and adaptable to changing situations. Whether in business or your personal life, these are foundational navigational skills. In our companies, who many are striving to create learning organizations or cultures of improvement, having people who have the basic foundational skills of communication, team player, analytical and technical know-how, and adaptability will support their quest. But why is it important to create a culture of improvement and even sustain it? To succeed in today's volatile and dynamic marketplace, businesses must respond and adapt to constantly changing customer demands. Market, labor and material costs, competition and regulatory headwinds also keep the business landscape in flux, making it difficult to predict tomorrow's organizational challenges. Many successful businesses combat headwinds by developing fast thinking, mobile and flexible teams capable of solving large and difficult business challenges. Methods like Scrum, Agile, Kaizen, and Tiger Teams are used to address the constantly changing business environment. The intent of these methods is to focus change and improvement activities on key business systems and processes. But the real power is how business leaders tap into human creativity and innovation to re achieve their goals. My husband and I lead a small coaching and consulting business built on the foundation that every person needs to be challenged. Every person needs to be creative and every person needs to be valued. We call this C squared V, challenged, creative, and valued. 
When creating a culture for business improvement, we put a structure in place to ensure people are challenged and working to improve all business activities. We set them up to use their innovative spirit and their creativity as they work hard to achieve business challenges. As a result, they provide extraordinary value to the organization, but more importantly, their personal value increases as they learn and contribute to the organization's success. Developing a business improvement culture blends both business and people needs together. This creates a robust system able to handle new business goals and challenges. Business improvement organizations are more adaptable and capable to handle growth and change. Sustaining an improvement culture and environment is the real key, requiring deeply embedded thinking and behavior patterns within the organization. The language we use, patterns of behaviors we develop, and developing the foundational skills in our people by giving them big challenges lets them unearth their creativity and feel valued about the work they do. This creates the culture of business improvement. It's a continual sustainment loop. Now, how do you get to this model? This is where Toyota Kata applies. Let me quickly introduce you to this methodology. Mike Rother is a researcher, author, and sought after keynote speaker, focusing his attention on learning and improvement systems. As a student of Toyota, Mike was well aware of their success and people-centric leadership. We know Toyota was first held up as an example of excellence in the mid 80s from the book, The Machine That Changed the World. Though many of us worked hard to replicate what Momac and Jones saw at Toyota, we weren't achieving the gains and successes expected. Looking back, I would have liked Womack and Jones to use the phrase, a lean business system, as opposed to a lean production system in their book. This would have promoted lean thinking across the entire enterprise and not just production. Now you may have noticed in this presentation, I've used the term business improvement culture and not continuous improvement culture because all of our activities must be aligned to real business needs. So back to Mike, he was really intrigued by trying to understand what was behind Toyota's long-term success. So in the early 2000s, Mike started his research with this question. What are the unseen managerial routines and thinking that lie behind Toyota's success with continuous improvement and adaptation? Notice almost 20 years have passed, giving us enough time to see the replication model wasn't working. Mike had inside access into Toyota, and during his visits, he started seeing managerial routines that focused on working hard to achieve big challenges while developing the skills and capabilities of their people. When I was the executive director for our local consortium, we were lucky enough to hear Mike's early research findings when we would ask him to keynote. Early on, Mike shared a presentation titled Good Systems, Good Thinking that started to outline the way Toyota set up a structure to achieve challenges and make improvements and some of the systems they had in place to support that structure. As the research and findings continued, Mike worked with a couple of companies to practice the routines he unearthed and started sharing those routines with our consortium where we would practice in a workshop style setting. Those two routines are what are now documented in Toyota Kata, a routine for improving the work and a routine for coaching through the improvement work. We now call those two routines the improvement kata and the coaching kata. These two routines are causing a radical shift in how we think about achieving big goals and how we do improvement work. This approach was more scientific and structured than how past improvement work has been done, and most importantly, provides a pathway for people development at any level of the organization. After using the improvement kata and coaching via the coaching kata for over 10 years now, it's my core belief following these two routines builds the foundational skills we need to be successful.
and provides the structure and roadmap for creating cultures of business improvement that are sustainable over time. Before we get too far though, let me define kata for you. Kata is a martial arts term, meaning form, routine, and or pattern. The purpose of following a kata is to develop mechanics, muscle memory, and mindfulness to use when needed, like when we do improvement work and when we solve complex problems. Just like getting ready in the morning, following and sticking to a routine allows us to create good habits. While that routine helps us develop those good habits, it also helps us get rid of bad habits that don't serve us well. Other benefits of following a pattern or routine are we're more efficient with our time because we don't have to make as many decisions. Once we've completed a task, our routine just tells us which task we need to go to next. Following a routine also helps us increase our proficiency. We get better at tasks and this results in skill mastery. As we build our skills, our self-confidence grows and we start to get more satisfaction from the work we're doing. Finally, following a routine helps us achieve goals. Successful people accomplish their goals by doing the same things over and over again. An athlete gets good at their sport because they practice daily. As I've studied, practiced, learned, and then practiced some more, what I've found in life is everything we do creates a pattern, and it's up to us to decide which pattern we want to teach. I choose to teach the patterns of the improvement kata and the coaching kata because they teach the foundational skills necessary to support business improvement and people involvement in growing skills and capabilities. With the two patterns of the improvement kata and coaching kata, their ultimate purpose is to develop the skills and capabilities, and we could say foundational skills, of people while helping them achieve extraordinary results. I know from doing this for so many years and in my heart of hearts, if we focus on practicing the improvement kata routine with support from a coach, we will achieve the result. To support the two routines, there are two roles in the improvement kata and the coaching kata, the learner and the coach. The learner is responsible for learning and following the improvement kata pattern with guidance from their coach. The coach is responsible for teaching the improvement kata pattern and for the results. Just by the nature of these expectations from the learner and coach, we're keeping the emphasis on skill development. I started working with two wonderful ladies from Legacy Health, Pam and Elena. They started out as novices when it came to improvement work. Each had a different challenge to achieve, and as we worked together, they as the learners and me as their really lucky coach, we built skills around how they communicated and enrolled their peers, how they analyzed and documented the current state of their respective processes, they learned how to set an interim goal and think scientifically as they experimented their way forward. As Pam and Elena developed these skills, we practiced them over and over until they started developing a new mindset or way of thinking about how they went about this work. After daily practice, total dedication to taking steps every day, and some extracurricular study, in a span of three months, they moved from novice to ready to coach. These two ladies continue to focus on enhancing those skills and getting even better at them. And now two years later, they're coaching other coaches. By following a routine, we build foundational skills to support problem solving, achieving big goals, and achieving a culture of business improvement. The routine I'm going to show you is a pattern anyone can follow on any process. Following the routine provides an opportunity for deliberate practice. This isn't an approach we do willy-nilly. Again, this is deliberate practice because the learner is learning new skills and thinking patterns in real time on a specific process. As the improvement kata is not done alone, their coach is connected to them throughout the process, guiding, teaching, mentoring, and assisting as necessary. 
let's walk through the improvement kata. The improvement kata pattern consists of four steps. In step one, we start by understanding where we need to go and what we're trying to achieve. So we align the work to the key business objectives and ensuring the improvement work is meaningful to the business. Then we move to step two, grasping the current condition. Here, we analyze the current state of the process, tossing out preconceived notions because we observe the live process with our own eyes. Once we have a good grasp of the current operating pattern, we move to step three, establishing the next target condition. Here, we set a close-in goal that defines a future operating pattern and results on, we need on the way to the challenge. Finally, in step four, we take daily steps of discovery that move us towards achieving the target condition. Let's dive into each of these steps in more detail. In step one, understand the direction or challenge. We align the improvement work to the business objectives. Most companies have vision statements, but those tend to have vague terms like be the best in the world or world class, be outwardly focused, and are further out in time, five, 10 years or more away. So to support the vision, we connect to the business objectives important at that time through a challenge that needs to be achieved within a year or two. That's much closer in and more impactful for the improvement work. A challenge statement is created to operationalize the business objective and includes key metrics and an achieved by date, which is a year or two out. Setting the challenge is an important activity for the leadership team because it aligns improvement work to the needed business objectives. So let's look at an example. Imagine your company produces a product where they need to create new offerings annually. A challenge statement to support this need could be, within existing budget, introduce 10 new product offerings, five that are new and five with feature expansions in each 12 month period with a gross margin of 50% by December 1st, 2020. So if you worked in product development and were handed this challenge, you would have a good understanding of your expectations for the coming year. Now, challenges typically come from leadership because they are tied to the overall company objectives. But even so, the foundational skills we develop when identifying and defining the challenge are seeing the big picture, not thinking in a silo or just what's within our span of control. Communication, we need to share the objective and get our peers and team members buy-in because we will need their support. And to do that will require us to be a team player. Now, once we know where we're heading, it's time to move forward in the improvement kata to step two and start grasping the current condition as related to the challenge. We document the gaps between where we are today and where we need to go as defined in the challenge statement. Grasping the current condition is a hands-on activity, not done in a conference room. We don't rely on preconceived notions about how the process functions. Instead, we gather facts and data through direct observation. To deeply understand the current condition, we don't just measure outcomes, such as number of pieces per day, overtime worked, and or quality. We spend time observing the actual process to see how it operates, to produce those outcomes. We do this to spot patterns of work and abnormalities that help us determine where we need to focus next on the way to the challenge. Key foundational skills are taught and practiced in this step of the improvement kata that have a long-term impact on an organizational culture. Skills like unbiased analysis, go and see, collection and organization of data, learning how to communicate the current operation in a clear and concise way. By building these skills during this step of the improvement kata, we set ourselves up to move into setting the next goal on our way to the challenge. We call this close-in goal a target condition. When we think of having a culture of business improvement, it's one that actually improves every day. That means striving forward every single day. The target condition keeps us striving forward. 
In Mike's book, The Toyota Kata Practice Guide, I like how he describes how target conditions are like golf. It takes several swings to get on the green of the hole. We step up to the ball with a plan in mind of how we'll swing to move the ball towards the green. And if you golf like me, that path is wildly unpredictable. But the truth is, we never know how it's going to go and what will get in the way of my ability to swing with correct form to get the ball onto the fairway. We learn though. We watch what happens and can make adjustments to the situation to see obstacles and identify what we need to work on. The skills we're teaching here are a mindset around how improvement happens. Instead of just reacting to problems, we move forward towards something important. The target condition becomes the focus, and that focus gives us a set of parameters where we can effectively move towards the goal. The key foundational skills taught in this step of establishing target conditions are learning and adjusting to a reality in front of, unfolding in front of you, being adaptable to those situations and thinking scientifically about what to do next. We still create a plan, but it's a hypothesis, a prediction informed from the current condition. We're developing a mindset around how improvement happens. Now in the improvement kata, once we've created the target condition, we start moving towards it. And we do this by taking daily steps. We're now on a path of experimentation and discovery. This is where scientific thinking comes in. A next step is defined along with an expectation. This creates a hypothesis. The step is taken and we reflect on what actually happened and what was learned from taking that step. This is PDCA, Plan, Do, Check, Adjust, in action. We're learning through experimentation as we move forward. When we take steps, we're confirming or refuting the results of the experiment. This helps us see and create a path forward based on a growing understanding of the real situation. The experiments help us see what we need to do to get closer to the target condition. The key foundational skills taught in the fourth step of the improvement kata are scientific thinking, understanding reality based on observable evidence, reasoning, and repeated testing. We're tapping into our observation skills as we run experiments to test their effects. We continue documenting data and communicating learnings, outcomes, and thoughts. So throughout the four steps of the improvement kata, as we start to work scientifically, we're building the foundational skills of critical thinking, analysis, documentation, striving and pushing forward, and scientific thinking. We're also shifting our mindset to one that connects improvement work to the business objectives and sees the connection. A mindset that needs to understand what is currently occurring before any improvements can be made. A mindset where we can rest on knowing an interim goal will be established and will take daily steps toward it as we think scientifically. Building these foundational skills and developing this mindset works together to create a business improvement culture. Imagine if everyone in your company thought and acted this way. You'd have an army of problem solvers who are the superheroes inside your organization. To build these skills, we're supported by a coach who already has experience with the improvement kata and can teach the pattern and help develop the mindset. The learner practices the improvement kata. The coach teaches the improvement kata to the learner and further develops their skills as a coach. Through situational learning, the coach's role is to teach the skills and help the learner develop the desired mindset where they tap into the foundational skills on a daily basis as they move forward through the steps of the improvement kata. Again, imagine inside your company, you have that army of superhero problem solvers who are focused on achieving the key business objectives. They're supported by a coach whose primary responsibility is to build their skills and capabilities to get stronger and more adaptable. Now, 
we're starting to see a structure built on skill development, learning, and support. This structure involves into a system that continues to support and build on itself. That sounds like a business improvement culture to me. And if you're raising your hand saying, count me in, here's a getting started guide. Skill yourself up first. There are several books, presentations, slide shares, and videos available to teach you Kata basics. Additionally, there are workshops you can attend to learn and practice the routines. And the sixth annual Kata Summit called KataCon is scheduled for February 2020 in Austin, Texas. It is a must attend for anyone learning and practicing the Kata patterns. Then identify individuals who want to learn these routines through practice. Identify a challenge for them to strive for and just do it, get going. Follow the pattern exactly for a while. And finally, consider finding someone who can help you at the beginning practice correctly. By following the routine of the improvement kata and having coaches in place to teach skills and mentor people through the learning process, we can build skills critical for success. These are the unseen managerial routines and thinking that lie behind Toyota's success that Mike researched. The improvement kata provides the framework and structure to build the foundational skills necessary to create and sustain a business improvement culture within your organization. Through daily practice that is deliberate, focused, and supportive, we build patterns that become norms. It's these norms that will sustain a culture over time. I'm passionate about utilizing the improvement kata and coaching routines to teach foundational skills that support growth and development so that everyone inside your organization can achieve C squared V and be challenged, creative, and valued every day. I thank you so much for your time. It's been a real honor to talk to you about my passion, which is the improvement kata and the coaching kata. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have or discuss any point in more detail. So please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you again.